I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Won't you come with me? Today it's going to be a three card oracle you pick with a diet at cross divination. So three cards you pick and then we'll find out what uh, the deeper detail is after that. Okay, so today it's going to be a three card oracle you pick and um, uh, with this uh, oracle cards and then the divination for the rest of the reading, uh, the diet at cross on each of the three cards with the classic tarot. So these cards are revealing light oracle cards and they were uh developed and created and, and and brought to life by marianne from revealing light tarot so i've been watching her for years and i love marianne and you should watch her if you haven't tried her so but anyway they're, they're in a, a good box a sturdy box which makes you feel like you've got something of value here and um the cards themselves are just beautiful and very thoughtfully done and if you haven't watched marianne you should and you'll see that she's a very careful uh, tarot reader and uh, clairvoyant, I would believe. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how she categorizes herself, but she does do um, amazing work. So anyway, so we'll use these to for the three cards uh, for the oracle. And then from that, uh, we'll go on to the dyadic cross for all, th for all of those. So if you know me, you know that I'm a very clumsy card handler so none of this will be surprising to you and if you don't know me stick around and maybe you'll enjoy my videos and come back and watch them again and again maybe you'll subscribe and uh, all that's good so i'm going to shuffle these up i'm going to get right into divination for these three cards for your oracle pick today okay and here we go we're going to take one two and three and that'll do it for these cards for right now. One, two, three. One, two, three. Pick your card, clear your mind, get your question right to the front of your mind, and just take a deep breath. <sighs> you hear that? And one, two, three. Remember, you can stop the tape if you need to. One, two, three. One, two, and three. And now, We'll reveal the cards one at a time, and then they'll be not the signifier in the next deck, but they'll be significant to the read. The first one is relationships, and right off the bat, all those, there's four hands here. This reminds me of the five uh, of wands, uh, which is a conflict. So relationships, the sum of us, the relationships, the sum of us. And now, Marianne was very thoughtful. She uh, included uh, lots of uh, information on this card. A lot of it I don't use. So the, in the corners, you'll see the chakras that are associated with these cards. And this would be the red root chakra right here. You'll see some numerology involved with these cards, which I'm not very uh, um, up to date on numerology. And then you'll see the element signs, this one being the earth sign. So relationships, the sum of us. And uh, it's so true, the relationships that, uh, that we, and of course the, the um, astrological symbol. So that's the first one, relationships, the son of us, some of us gives you something to really ponder over. And this will be the guiding, uh, determining uh, factor in the uh, diet at cross that I do in just a minute. Now, if you pick number two, this card speaks to empathy. When we allow our compassion to inspire us, all things are possible. When we allow our compassion, and I think that's so important today, our compassion to inspire us, all things are possible. And again, uh, Marianne has included chakra colors in this one. This is yellow, which is wisdom. And uh, the element here is water. Um, again, this is an astrological uh, reference here that I'm not very familiar with. And uh, so empathy, empathy is the key to the reading uh, that we'll do with this card today empathy so relationships and empathy and then number three if that's the card you chose is foundations and i don't know what's more important than foundations and again we have the red root chakra we have uh, the earth uh, element of course with this one and this card tells us that foundations if something is out of balance go back to the start and start again that's just so true you can't build uh, a house you can't build anything on a, on a shaky foundation. You have to go back, clear the earth away, 
plant that first stone, and then you can build your foundations from that. So uh, this, uh, of course, is the uh, earth element again. So those are the three cards we have for our oracles uh, today. I'm going to push them back just a little bit, and then we'll start off uh, with a diet at cross divination. And that's going to be with uh, the classic tarot. This is uh, Llewellyn's uh, interpretation of the Rider Waite system. Uh, and these cards in the booklet by Barbara Moore and the, and the illustrations by Eugene Smith. Great box. Uh, like you probably know if you watch me, I'm just a sucker for these magnetic clasps. I love those things. And then um, the card, the uh, booklet that comes with them is a full color booklet with a lot of thought gone into how you can use these cards for divination. The cards themselves are very easy to use. And I think one of the guiding principles Llewellyn had in developing these cards uh, specifically was to make them a clear, non-cluttered uh, representation of the Rider Waite system. And um, it's funny, I was just talking about Arjibarji or the Five of Wands, and it jumped out on my hand uh, just then, so that's interesting. But um, I'll do this part here just to give you a look at the cards. If you don't get to look at a lot of tarot cards, and um, like I do, I buy a bunch of tarot cards all the time, uh, crazy hobby that got me into this, and then... Um, and then it helps to mix up the cards. Uh, I don't particularly like to use a lot of force to shuffle the cards. I try to treat them with a little bit of respect. Um, and that doesn't mean a thing to anybody except to me. And um, hopefully uh, whatever uh, is the guiding spirit in doing these divinations. So we're going to give them a few shuffles, a couple of cuts maybe, and then uh, get on with the first one, which is relationships. I'm going to put these two off to the side right now. So we're dealing right now with relationships. That's the guiding uh, principle of the reading we're going to have right now. And you know, it could be that you had a completely different question or issue in mind when you chose number one, if that's the card that you chose or one of the cards that you chose. And it may be that the cards have decided that this is pertinent to you, either in the issue that you have in your mind, and you may have to stretch your mind to include this divination uh, for that to make sense to you, or it may be that this is more important at this very moment uh, for you than maybe what it was you were trying to get an answer to. So just open your mind, clear your head, get your question right up front, and let's pull six cards to get this divination started. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so that's six cards. We're going to put these off to the side to help us with that a little bit later. And like I said, uh, we're thinking about relationships right now. The sum of us. Relationships, the sum of us. The root uh, of, our, of our spiritual uh, trust, security, and, secure, and, and, and uh, stability, and uh, an earth symbol. The signifier for this, then, is the Hierophant. Relationships and the Hierophant. And the Hierophant is, um, you know, governing uh, rules that we follow, um, a plan that's in place that we, we really uh, have to um, uh, follow in order to uh, make things work as smoothly as they possibly can. So the signifier of this reading, of this dyadic cross, is the Hierophant. Now, the challenge to the Hierophant, and let's keep relationships in our mind, the challenge to the Hierophant is a magician. Yeah, when you've got rules to go by, uh, you may have someone yourself or someone else who's trying to decide what can they use at their disposal to, to work the rules, okay? And, um, you know, it's always possible to find some way to work around the rules, but let's remember that uh, procedures, rules, um, the, the way that's established to go about a thing is there for a reason. And um, so the challenge to this Hierophant then, these rules, is the magician looking for some magical solution um, for the situation and maybe following the uh, pre-thought out um, uh, tried and true method for getting through the thing maybe what is what you could, could look at. You know, what people have done before us to get through this issue. The basis of this reading, then, is the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords speaks to, some could say an abuse of power, it's a disappointment. It's um, someone taking advantage to the detriment 
of the others. Um, this person has collected up these swords, is standing guard over the last two here, while these folks walk off into the, diff into the distance, and they don't look happy about having done that. Um, so if this, uh, this is the basis of this reading. So there's some sort of disappointment, betrayal that uh, stands uh, for, uh, in this uh, issue. Uh, the near past of this reading is the Queen of Wands, and the Queen of Wands is action. This woman is gonna is gonna make something happen. She's gonna move forward, and uh, and there's just no standing in her way. So this got moved into motion, and um, and maybe before we thought about how we should do it, and don't think about how to get around it, and and understand whether you've been um, uh, taking advantage of the situation or someone else is doing that. The sky for this, the highest uh, outcome you want to seek here is the Four of Wands. And the Four of Wands are celebrations, uh, movements, action, powers, plans, but smallish. There's something bigger in the distance, but we got to uh, uh, celebrate the steps that we take along the way to get there. Remember, the steps that we take along the way to get there. And then the likely outcome for this, if that's the card you pick, is the Two of Pentacles, keeping things balanced, keeping things up in the air. This is value. This is important. And uh, if it weren't, we could just let this fall to the ground and go. But no, uh, we need to keep everything on an even keel. Okay. So that was relationships. Now let's go on to the second card, the second Oracle card, which is telling us to pay attention to empathy empathy and relationships and empathy actually kind of go together so if you chose both of those uh, that's a, an interesting pair so we'll give these a quick shuffle um we'll uh oh something went in backwards that's not good upside down i don't like but backwards is absolutely not allowed um so let's see what we get for the second card of empathy when we allow our compassion to inspire us all things are possible when we allow our compassion to inspire us, all things are possible. So let's see how that works out for us in uh, in this in this divination. Six cards: one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, this fellow is going to stand guard <coughs> over that last thing. Now let me put a piece of gum. In so that I don't uh, cough throughout the whole reading. And then we'll go from there. So the signifier card, empathy. And the nine of wands is a signifier here. And it's telling us, you know, we've been through it. We've taken a hit, but we're still standing, and we can move on. So... Think of this card as the embattled warrior who is still going to make this happen. That's what we got there for this card. The challenge to that is the emperor. And the emperor tells us that, you know, this is someone who is in control of the situation. And many times maybe we're trying to be the emperor when we've been hit, remember to add a, a dose of empathy into the mix. The base of the reading is the Six of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles is distributing the wealth, distributing the value, seeing that um, everyone gets their share of what they need. The near past to this reading is the Queen of Wands. Same card as we had in the other reading. It's interesting. The Queen of Wands is the force that's making this plan move forward. In the sky for this reading is Temperance. And just like the previous reading where we had the Two of Pentacles, Temperance is a balance. But this is almost a, a, a demanded, this is a major arcana card. So this is a, a very necessary um, equality of the elements that are at play here. The likely outcome is the Two of Wands which is more planning. You know, look to the future, get your ducks in a row, and make sure that you've thought through with empathy how you're going to handle this issue. Okay. So now we'll start again. 
with the third card, Foundations. Foundations kind of speak to me of the very beginning of whatever we're doing. You can't, something's not going to be successful, or it's certainly not as successful as it could be, uh, without a solid foundation. You know, you can have a, a poorly built house stand up for years, but it's always going to have symptoms. It's going to only have cracks in the wall, windows and doors that don't close well because it's uneven. And uh, so you need to go back to the beginning and work on those foundations. Six cards for this divination. Five and six. We're done with these cards for now. We're going to concentrate on foundations. The signifier for this is death. It's just is exactly what I said. You have to stop and start again. Stop and start again. Foundations. So if something is out of balance, go back to the start and start again. Very appropriate. The challenge to doing this, however, is a Seven of Cups. And wow, these readings have been very similar today. They've sort of been linked. Seven of Cups is an embarrassment of choices. You've got so many choices to, 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 to pick from, but you want to make sure that you carefully consider each one. Look, one of these is devilish. One of these is a serpent. One of these is prayerful. So look at the choices that you have here and make sure at least that you feel you're, you're making the choice that's going to further this on a solid foundation. The basis of this reading, then, is just that. The Four of Swords is, is to stop and, and at your peril of getting up, stop and really consider what you're getting ready to do. The past of this reading is a Wheel of Fortune. So something brought us into this that was almost a stroke of luck. But... That's when we need to, to realize, okay, we've got this good fortune. Let's make sure we build on it appropriately and consider uh, where we're going from here. The um, <laughs> I love how the cards keep reappearing. The sky of this reading is a magician, and the magician tells us again that we have everything at our disposal, at disposal, <laughs> at our disposal to make this happen. You know, make a move, get started in the right direction, but do it with some thought. And, and considering the foundation. And then the likely outcome of all of this is secrets being revealed. You know, and once you go back to the beginning and work through the issues of your problem, you may find just that secret that you needed to really complete the journey. So that's what we've got for foundations. If something's out of balance, go back to the start and start again. So that's our three card Oracle you pick today. And I hope that was helpful to you. If it wasn't, maybe come back to it again or tune in tomorrow and we'll see what happens then. Okay, so that was our three pick oracle for today. And I hope it was useful to you. And if it wasn't, come back to it again or maybe consider um, um, another choice of your card. In any event, my name is Mark. This is My Journey Through Tarot. Thank you so very, very much for coming along and let's do it again tomorrow. I'll be here and we can take the train together. Ciao for now.